Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we're going to dive into a special astrology topic as we do on the Monday episodes. And today we're going to discuss the energetic shift of the sun moving into Aquarius conjunct Pluto, where they will be conjunct at zero degrees of Aquarius together. However, before we get to that turning point of energy, we will have the sun also conjunct Pluto in Capricorn at 29 degrees. So that means the sun is conjunct Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn on January 20th, then they both move in to Aquarius on January 21st. Now, if you're on my YouTube channel, then you perhaps saw the video I created for you on this topic. But in this podcast, we're going to go deeper into these energies. I'm going to bring in more specifics and examples of the energy shift that's underway, as well as deeper understanding of what we're moving into and how to be prepared for it, how to be ready as best we can with how the world is changing, evolving, and going into very new territory. But first, let's take a look at how Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. Yes, 2008. And we've had a big, intense journey with Pluto in Capricorn as it has changed our lives. Capricorn is the third and final earth sign. It is a cardinal sign. It's also a topic we've been discussing intensely over the past number of years. So I'm not going to repeat myself by discussing all of the Pluto and Capricorn themes again, but it essentially has brought to our attention the hierarchies in our world, the structures, the governments, the institutions. It's about our work, our career, our commitments that create our life and how we show up regularly to those commitments. It's what we understand as being monumental and important in our world, but also in our lives and how radically that has changed since 2008. Now, if you have planets or points in Capricorn, this has deeply affected you. You have had to let some things complete and end. You've experienced big permanent life changes. And there's things that have drastically shifted for you that have probably been very difficult at times, very tough and has brought you into new understandings of your strength, of your fortitude, of your ability to stay strong and keep going, of what you do when things get too big or when the pressure is too heightened. There's a lot that goes into these energetics, but what we're moving into now The sun conjunct Pluto at the very end of this journey and the sun shining a light on the final expressions of Pluto and Capricorn, highlighting what we are looking at, what's completing, what is ending. And these changes don't just happen overnight. And in fact, they won't because Pluto returns to Capricorn in September, October, and most of November 2024. So we're not fully complete with the Pluto in Capricorn energies, but this is the last time that the sun will be conjunct Pluto in Capricorn and the sun bringing in the light of consciousness around what we've been understanding relates to our soul mission, a new purpose, a new sense of satisfaction, a new understanding of what you want to do in the world, how you want to show up, where you're ready to stand more in your power and your strength, and how you are being required to make changes in your life to do so. So the energy of Pluto and Capricorn is still going to be felt in 2024. Even though Pluto goes into Aquarius and activates that energy, which we'll get to in just a moment, please note that it's not fully complete. So this is one of the turnover years, and I have done a separate podcast for you on that very topic, as well as other 
podcasts on your Pluto in Capricorn journey. So please listen to those if you would like more specifics on this energy and how it perhaps has shown up for you. So in January 2024, when the sun is conjunct Pluto, what occurs is quite fascinating and quite rare. So they are exactly conjunct at 546 a.m. That's Pacific time. And then the sun enters Aquarius and then Pluto enters Aquarius less than 12 hours later. So there is this intensity of the sun and Pluto interacting. And that means that the energies of Pluto are very heightened and strong. They are going to be more present, more dominant and strongly felt as the sun shines a light on what has been hidden, what's been in the shadows, what's been in the underbelly that needs to be revealed. This can be a day of very big announcements. This could be a day when the energies are shifting in the world at large that can be hard to see or understand. In fact, this could be a day when a lot is happening that we won't see for a while, that there could be a turnover in command, a changeover in agendas or directions. This is when there could be masses of people who are drastically affected over this weekend and who are receiving new orders, new directives, new downloads. And this is all part of the huge shift of the sun conjunct Pluto changing signs. Now, as they both move into Aquarius at zero degrees, the very, very beginning of Aquarius, they are in an interesting conversation that actually echoes where Jupiter and Saturn were at during their great conjunction in December 2020. So that's when Jupiter and Saturn were conjunct at zero degrees of Aquarius. And now here comes the Sun and Pluto, who are both stronger, who are both more dominant, and who will overtake whatever was happening or unfolding in December 2020, as they began a new synodic cycle. So this is a powerful point of initiation. These are new energies coming forth, being developed. A new stage of evolution occurs when you have the Sun and Pluto conjunct, because Pluto is about destruction. What needs to be demolished, what needs to be torn apart. But with the sun there, the sun is bringing it to our awareness. And what we have during this changeover is also a change in rulership. And this is really a big deal. Because since 2008, Pluto in Capricorn has been answering to Saturn. Saturn was the sous chef, if you will, the the co-pilot the additional energy that was important in how that Pluto and Capricorn energy was expressed. And back in 2008, Saturn was in Virgo. Now, Saturn takes about two to three years to move through each astrology sign. And so there's actually a very nice synergy here that unfolded where it's been just over 15 years of Saturn's journey through the astrological signs. And Saturn was in Virgo back in 2008. And now, 15 years later, Saturn is on the other side of the astrological wheel in Pisces. So since 2008, Saturn has moved through all of Virgo and the second half of the zodiac to Pisces, bringing our attention to issues of relationships and the world at large, which is what the second half of the zodiac rules. And again, Pluto and Capricorn was working with that Saturn. Now, as Pluto moves into Aquarius, Pluto is now working with Uranus more strongly than Saturn. So Aquarius is co-ruled by both Saturn and Uranus. But Uranus is now going to be more dominant. And this is going to awaken much more. This is a much more dynamic, unstable energy. This is more revolutionary. This is the energy of turmoil. This is the energy of instability and not being certain. 
Whereas Saturn is more slow and steady. Show me what you've got. What's the plan? How are we going to do this? Saturn has given us time to understand things, to collect information, to sit and digest, to perhaps research or go into more specifics, to get the lay of the land and to see the bigger picture. Well, now that Pluto enters Aquarius, this energy is much more volatile and active. And we're moving into uncharted territory that is actually triggering some of the same themes from the middle of 2023. And that's because less than a week after the sun and Pluto move into Aquarius, Uranus stations direct on January 26th or 27th, depending on your time zone, at 19 degrees of Taurus, which is where it was the middle of the year in 2023. And here we have an awakening giant. Here we have Uranus coming alive with new support from Pluto and the sun, new changes, new surprises, new developments that happen in a lightning speed faster than we can think. However, it probably relates to plans that were already in motion or in place from middle of 2023. And now things really start to show up in the real world, meaning Uranus in Taurus is our financial systems, is the inflation, is the increase in living, in rent, in everyday items. It's the energy of what we've been having to move around in our own lives to take care of our basic needs, which is Taurus, to ensure that when you go to the grocery store, you can buy what you need to buy. You can have it in your pantry or in your fridge. Now this energy increases. Now things are going to come front and center about what's been going on in the economy, in the financial markets, where There can be announcements about, you know, job growth is doing great, job growth is steady, or the stock market is strong, but you have to take into account, but look at how the cost of everyday life has increased, which makes more of an impact on our daily lives than other areas of the financial ecosystem. The Uranus and Taurus energy is going to be felt as the new year begins, there can be more announcements around companies closing, job loss, shifts in the economy, things that are no longer going to be in place. This is where we see more things falling apart and fracturing because when Pluto enters Aquarius and its ruling planet Uranus stations direct all within the same week, that's a giant kapow of world changes, of life changes. And I don't mean that in a scary way. I mean that in a realistic way that we've already been in these energies and there have been some things that have been held back from public view. And so when they are more evident, when they come up, then we're going to need to be more flexible, more willing to work with what we've got, more aware of the reality of the world at large and to be ready to make new decisions and to be adaptable to what is necessary and what is essential for us. And we have all of this occurring in the first month of the year. And of course, 2024 is going to be a presidential election year in the United States, which is also when the energies are ramped up, the stakes of the game get bigger. And there will be more extremes. There will be more extremes between those in power, those who want power. There will be more dynamics unfolding between these agendas and what they will do to either gain or retain power. So then this will certainly affect the public, which is Aquarius, the groups, the masses, the voters, voting technology, how votes will be tallied, how votes will be counted, the authenticity of those votes, what is happening behind the scenes as well. This also has a mounting pressure towards amplified war and what is currently being ramped up on the world stage around that theme. 
the preparations that are being made that can appear to be clandestine unless you are looking for them, unless you're aware of what's really going on in the world right now and not simply taking what we're being spoon fed. Because sometimes, or rather most of the times, it's sort of like having a child where you're trying to distract the child. You know, here's your toy. Play with this toy while the adults take care of these matters. And there's going to be even more awakenings occurring here around the bigger picture of what's unfolding on the world stage, including what's happening at the southern U.S. border, the recruiting process that's underway, the agendas and handshakes that are happening behind closed doors, the business deals, agreements, and ongoing negotiations that are unfolding as well. And all of these are themes as we move into January, and not only the energies of Aquarius, but then now the powerful influence of Uranus and Taurus. And what Uranus and Taurus has been showing us since it entered Taurus in 2018, where we've had to make adjustments with our finances. We've had to look at how to remain steady and strong among chaos. But this energy actually is going to move us into more things fracturing and breaking apart. And as soon as I say that, I know that there is some of you out there who don't want to hear that and you you want the whole we're all one and you want the kumbaya and you want all of that energy of unity consciousness, which is beautiful and powerful and is still here. It's just in the higher realms. It's almost like viewing that unity consciousness moving all over the planet that our unity is in the fact that we're all here experiencing these dynamic, shifting, fractured energies together. And can we remember that through the temporary experience of this lifetime? Can you remember that as an overarching theme that does unite us for those who are united through those common energies, but that isn't the case on the earth plane, that isn't part of the physical world reality, and it's not what we're moving into. Rather, we're moving into breaking into a million pieces and the fracturing of energies that we then need to honestly and rationally look at to understand the bigger picture of it all. Similar to having a beautiful piece of ceramic and that ceramic crashes and breaks into a million pieces and you look at it and it looks like a mess. It's just a huge mess. You don't want to step on it. You don't want to cut your foot and yet you want to clean it up and bring it back together. And when you bring it back together, it then creates a new mosaic a new mosaic where it doesn't resemble what was, but you create from the chaos, you recreate from what was into something new and you see it in a different light. And maybe those pieces don't fit back together exactly as they originally were. But if you can see the beauty in the new creation and that part of life on this planet is the ongoing evolution of our recreation process, how we're able to understand that everything is temporary, changes are part of the game, change is the only consistent, right? That's the energy we're moving into, and it's not going to look like it was. And so there can be grief with that. There can be sadness with that, especially Saturn and Neptune and Pisces. We're going to have collective grieving. We're going to have to honor ourselves as we watch the world change, as we see this turnover and these shifts, as some things just fall away or are no longer functional, as systems break, as things shift, and it isn't clear what they're going to be again just yet because it takes time. And keep in mind, we are working with these outer planets that are bigger picture energies, higher consciousness. They are planets that work with generations, through generations. We're making generational changes. 
And that takes generations to change. So it's not as if we're dealing with the moon and okay, things are going to be back together in 28 days. It's not like we're even dealing with Mars, where the energies come back around every two years. No, now we're looking at how Pluto is interacting with Uranus and it takes many years for the changes to come about and for us to see the bigger picture. So what we are being assigned here by the universe and also by your soul's choice to be here on the planet is to find the joy in the recreation process, to have places to go for your self-care and your peace, to understand what lights you up, what makes you happy, what gives you life, what do you enjoy today? and how to make the most of that for yourself. And I don't mean that as a stupid platitude. I mean that sincerely, because I know how easy it is to be on the treadmill of life. And you're like, I got my eight to five, and then I gotta figure out dinner, and then I'm gonna work out, and then I'll probably watch some TV, and then I'm tired. And so if that is your routine or something similar, it is your responsibility to infuse more life into your routines, to look at what do you need to look forward to on Saturday or on Thursday nights, or what is something you can do that is good for you on Tuesday morning or on your Wednesday lunch break. Incremental changes, incremental dosages of joy are going to give you life and sustain you. Those are in your control. That is something you can choose. And so we're also assessing how much of my energy have I assigned outside of me? How much of my energy have I given to what I need to do every day? And how much is left for me? How much is my own life force left for me? And that is one thing that only you can decide. And you can feel it in yourself where you get excited. And if you don't know what you like or what you want, well, that can be a wonderful adventure. That could be a great undertaking. What do I love right now? What is passionate for me? What makes me happy? It can be a new genre of books. It can be an art class. It can be something that you absolutely love finding or discovering. I, for example, love these really old Greek coins, and I just found one last month that's Poseidon and Neptune, and it just made me so damn happy, and it wasn't because it was a rare artifact. It was more more than that. So it's kind of like, what do you collect? What makes you excited to be here? What recipes do you want to try? I mean, this is the basic stuff of life that we can move away from and forget. But this is also how you can come back to yourself. Come back to yourself and what gives you life and what makes you happy. Because that is always your responsibility. And yes, we're moving into big territory here. And there are big things that are going to unfold in 2024 that are going to invoke fear, that are going to stir up our emotions, that are going to get to us at very levels of our being. All of these are control dynamics. All of these are ways that our energy is manipulated. And so how do you rise above it and remain in your power, remain in connection to what gives you life and what makes you happy? And that's going to be something that could also light you up as both the sun and Pluto move into Aquarius, which can offer us new ways of conceptualizing our lives, new ways of understanding what we want to create, what's possible, new ways of awakening us into more of what we want to experience or call in, what we want to do with our energy fields and what we mentally focus on. So this can be a very creative influence as well. You can have some instant downloads that give you clarity. You could have something arrive that shows you what you want to drastically change in your life. And that's Pluto where there's no going back. And I feel like that's going to be one of the themes here that is started in January 2024, is 
What do you want to begin that is calling to you, that's initiating a new part of your energy field, that is honoring your path, that is honoring how far you've come, that gives you new insight into where you want to go or what is opening up for you? And of course, it depends on your chart, right? It depends on how zero degrees of Aquarius is working with you and how it is asking you even to check in on what was potentially seeded or initiated back with the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction at zero degrees of Aquarius in December 2020. And here comes the bigger powerhouses, the powerhouses of energy that want you to now make those changes ready or not. In fact, the thing with these energies with both the sun and Pluto conjunct is that it's happening ready or not, and it's moving us forward. That's part of evolution. That's part of how we are stepping into this new territory. And so something came to mind uh, that I wanted to share with you, and I know it's going to sound so random, but I actually feel like it's so applicable to what we're in right now. And it's actually the Jurassic Park movie, the very first one that came out in 1993, 30 years ago now, and how that movie was, of course, a blockbuster, a big deal, blah, blah, blah. But when you look back on it, you can see It was never about dinosaurs. It's about ethics and morality. It's about control. What are the control mechanisms in place? And are they sufficient? Do they really work? Or how do they really play out? And it reminds me of a scene between the geneticist, Henry Wu, and John Hammond, who was the owner of the park, the one who was developing this. It was his great vision. And... Ian Malcolm, played by Jeff Goldblum. And Henry Wu, the geneticist, is talking about how the dinosaurs can't breed because they're all female. And that population control is one of their security measures. There's no unauthorized breeding. We won't allow that. We will control how they breed. We control their chromosomes. And we deny them anything that would change their breeding habits. And then you have Jeff Goldblum's character saying, the kind of control you're attempting here is not possible. If there's one thing that the history of evolution has taught us, it's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free, expands to new places and crashes through barriers, painfully, perhaps even dangerously. And right there, you've described the shift from Capricorn control into Aquarius chaos and freedom. And that's why it reminded me of that quote from Jurassic Park, Ian Malcolm saying, life finds a way. And when you look at the themes in this movie, it's so wild how it echoes what's going on in the world at large. If you can see through the messages And I know some of you do that often and some of you do that well. And that is also how the movie is not about dinosaurs. It's about people. The same was said about the show The Walking Dead. It's not about zombies. It's about people in survival. It's about what people choose, what people believe are their options, and what they need to do in various situations that bring up ethics and morality. And so when we look at the control mechanisms that Capricorn wants. Keep it in order. Follow tradition. This is what's been done. This is how we maintain people. This is how we maintain structures because it works, because it leads us to this outcome. We get this result. It achieves this goal. Incoming Aquarius energy doesn't care about any of that, wants to explode it, wants to fracture it, wants to break it up, That's the rebellion and the anarchy and the revolution. And then Aquarius is like, this is exciting because now we're going to find something new to do with all these pieces. Now we're going to see what we can recreate that's actually a better fit that will work for us going forward that we didn't see before. 
And that is part of this significant energy shift that begins in January. Now, I know I'm talking about some key periods here, specifically January 20th to January 27th. That's the week where the sun is conjunct Pluto, they move into Aquarius, and then Uranus stations direct at 19 degrees, five minutes of Taurus. So that's a big energy period. And there will be things happening in the world, but there also could be a lot happening behind the scenes that isn't evident just yet, as I mentioned previously. And this is where there is a cosmic turnover of energy signatures. And it'll be important to listen to your nervous system, to tap into what is pulsing through you, what you feel is being activated, where you're ready to do something different. And maybe you're ready to make a big life change. Maybe you're required to make a big life change. This energy certainly is connected to technology, technology companies, technology jobs, where we have new evolutionology. Of course, now we're all familiar with artificial intelligence. And I find it quite fascinating that Google has introduced their new AI model called Gemini. And so it's being touted as the first model to outperform human experts on massive multitask language understanding and many other things that are coming about with this development. And in fact, that's part of what we're going to see is everything that's been going on behind the scenes that's been tested, um, that's been practiced, that has been used in various environments and scenarios. All these different technologies that have been going on for decades are going to be more evident. We're going to see them now. And it can be a shock. It can be a surprise. It can be sold to us as a convenience and something sexy and you've got to have one and why don't you own this? And all of that is what is coming alive here as Pluto moves into Aquarius and then we're going to see it strongly activated when Uranus enters Gemini in 2026. But Google already has dibs on that name, Gemini, with their new AI multimodality experience. And so to go back to this Jurassic Park scenario, another quote is, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could they didn't stop to think if they should. So we have some big ethical and moral grounds that we're moving into where we're going to need to look at what is correct for you individually, for us as a society, for us as a global population. And there will be things that we don't have a choice around, but we have our individual sovereignty to maintain. And that will be one of the bigger themes as well with the sun and Pluto moving into Aquarius. What is my sovereignty? What does it mean in the collective? How is it empowered or rather is it disempowered? Pluto first disempowers. That's just how Pluto rolls. And I know that we love to think power to the people. But first, the systems that don't offer power have to collapse, have to be deconstructed. That's the work of the people. The people, which is Aquarius, have to demolish those systems. And that's the anarchy. That's the rebellion. That's the coup or the rallying cry for change. And so we move further into this very dynamic energetic battle between good and bad, dark and light, and understanding that really it's 50 shades of gray and that there's a lot going into it that can be hard to see the truth or to see the intentions or the sides, quote unquote, especially in such a diverse multiplayer game. And this is part of the ongoing fracturing and how we are going to be breaking into many pieces. And there's a lot that can come up around that. And I feel too like 
it reminds us to go higher, go higher into your soul's signature or into your soul's journey, go higher into what you believe is true for you, even as so much unfolds on the physical plane. And there are greater levels of separation. And it's interesting because I was seeing this too as potentially an internal fracturing where you've realized there are people in your life you can talk about some things with, but you can't talk about that with them. Or you can mention, you know, C, L, and R, but you certainly cannot bring up M, G, or K, right? Like we have a new way of interacting with people because we live in these dynamic worlds now where we relate on different levels. We have different kinds of relationships or connections. And it's as simple as you've learned, okay, I'm just not going to bring up that topic when I go see my parents or when I go see my kids or when I go to school. And I'm not going to mention this. I only talk about that with these friends over here or with my spouse or with my partner. So we have been navigating these different areas of our energy being fractured, but there can be beautiful gifts in that because part of a fracture, and I certainly don't mean this literally, I mean the energetic fracture invites you to look at how you can maintain your sovereign wholeness in a new way. And so then you turn to the left and it's a new light shining through and you turn to the right and it's a new light shining through there and it creates this beautiful mosaic of light expressions and new shades and new colors and new things that come to life because of what has been realized through the fracturing. And I really hope that makes sense because I'm just channeling what I'm seeing through this, that we have to maintain a really deep sense of trust in our power, in our choices, in our sovereignty. And that can be harder to do at times when there's a lot of big energies. But this comes back to knowing that you're already whole and it's all just a game and it's all just the stretching of energies and what happens if I go over here and what happens if I do this or what happens if this unfolds and and to see it with a new lightness, a new levity, a new sense of I'm just going to be in this game with a deeper connection to my soul and to my spiritual practices and that's what will get me through as the physical world and the human experience is going to shift and evolve into very new territories. And your soul is so excited about that. Your soul is delighted because the soul has this very neutral energy. The soul isn't about the judgment or the emotions or the expectations. The soul is in here for the experience of it all, for being on the playground, and for all the ways that some things are serious. Yes, they are. And some things are big. Yes, they are. And we have responsibilities. Yes, we do. There is another part of your energy that can help balance all that, that you can go to for your own bigger picture. And you can tap into it in a way that then allows you to integrate it and download it into this earthly experience. And in fact, when we think about 3D and 5D, you know, the 3D is our reality. It's what you see and touch and feel and sense. It's your body. It's your morning muffin. It's your favorite pen. It's everything around us. And what we're doing is integrating 5D into this, downloading and bringing in new energies into the 3D, bringing the 5D into the 3D in a way that elevates our experience of the 3D. Because when we talk about, and there's a lot of rhetoric about leaving the 3D, going into the 5D. Okay, you leave the 3D, that's called dying. That's called game over and you leave this reality, right? No, we bring the 5D in. And that then changes and evolves the 3D. So we bring in those higher downloads, those higher healed parts of ourselves, our new wisdom. We bring in new energies of love and compassion into ourselves. You download that into your morning muffin. You bring it into your favorite pen. 
No, really, you are wanting to change your 3D experience by bringing in these new cosmic energies that are a higher vibration. And that takes time, especially when you're working with the fear body and the emotional body. When you're working with your primal survival instincts, that takes time. There's things that that we only move through so fast because they're denser, they're heavier, feels like the brick at the bottom of the ocean, or feels like something that's been big for you and your energy and your soul, and there's more karma with it, or there's more emotion with it, more fear with it. That takes time to elevate and to move through that. That takes years. It can take years honestly. And so what we're doing in each of the years here is we are working on that individually. We are offering it to the collective. We are perhaps offering it to our family or to our friends. You know, we're doing what we can with what's in front of us, but we're then allowing more of those higher vibrating energies and frequencies to be embedded and imprinted into our daily 3D realities. And so I also feel here that with this energy of the sun conjunct Pluto in Aquarius, many people are going to be lit up beautifully and with great confidence around where they're going next. And they're going to be ready to pounce, ready to make moves, ready to go for it, feeling like they have a new lease on life, feeling like, yes, this is my time. I'm here for it. And they're going to feel that energy pulsing through them to move ahead in their life and to accelerate. And that's because of the dense work that has been required with Pluto and Capricorn. It has been dense and heavy. It has been something that has just been so much at times. And especially those of you who have your planets or points in the cardinal signs, the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, Pluto has been restructuring and transforming your life. And Pluto is discomfort. Pluto is the deepest fears of what if I can't? What if I'm not good enough? What if I won't? What if I'm not taken seriously? What if I'm not taken seriously for stepping into my gifts, for stepping into my power and my soul mission? And the energy moves into Aquarius and it's just I'm ready and I don't even care what anyone says. I don't even care what the peanut gallery says. I don't care. There's that freedom you give yourself because now you've set yourself free into more of your truth, more of your authenticity. And that's part of what this Pluto in Aquarius is guiding us towards. More of our authenticity, more of an understanding of what you're ready to move into because of the healing you've been on, because of what you have been required to transform. So there are many gifts with this as well. And some people are going to take off, I mean, rocket launches. I mean, they're going to go high and far because now they're ready for it and it's right on time. So keep in mind that these energies always work with each of us differently. And so Claiming your own path and staying in your own lane is one of the best things you can do, knowing that everyone will have a very different experience. And that's part of this breaking into a million pieces is that people are going to be guided to set themselves free, perhaps from things they've been doing for lifetimes, things they've been working through. I mean, even a sense of a new lease on life. Because you have been so radically transformed that you aren't going to accept or tolerate anything less. I feel like those of you who are light workers and star seeds, your energy guides, you've been doing things ahead of your time. You've been ahead of the pack. Perhaps you are a group leader for your soul group. Uh, you have felt like you don't belong here on the planet you are probably going to have some beautiful developments that have been hard earned, but now well worth it. There's going to be some directions you're meant to move into and open up towards. There's going to be some things that have your name on it that no one else can do the way you do it. So it will be power up mode. And if you have strong fire signs and air signs in your chart, This is good for you to move into this new territory. This is going to feel like you're more supported. 
because now we're moving out of the dense heaviness of Capricorn into the lightning speed of Aquarius. And that means things can happen quickly. There can be leapfrogging and quantum openings where all of a sudden something shows up and you're like, I thought I had to work five more years for this. Or I thought I had to stay in a traditional trajectory to get there. And then it shows up front and center and you can't say no because it's exactly what you want. So for all the ways this energy can appear dire and heavy, there's also going to be activations that are beautifully empowering and right on time and are going to set you free from a previous version of yourself that you might feel no longer exists. And that is part of this turnover of the energies and this changeover of the rulerships of Pluto moving into Aquarius. Now, there is support for this, and I talk about it in my 2024 Soul Growth Program, where we have beautiful support with Pluto in Aquarius and the trine from Sedna entering Gemini, working with the super galactic center in Libra. So please check out the program where I do a deep dive into that, a full presentation, and I go into more about the themes of Pluto in Aquarius And what is being activated collectively, what's coming up in our communities, in our technologies, what's coming up in our new ways of interacting with each other and how that's shifting, how we're moving into more ways of communicating that support our quantum potentials. It's a lot. It's exciting, but it can also be overwhelming. As we move into these bigger galactic energies that are new for our planet. And that's important to note here. That's how our planet is evolving. Our planet is evolving. We are a part of it. Take your morning muffin with you. You're going to need it. And know that this is the ongoing ride that we're here for. So I'll put the link to that 2024 program below. Uh, In it, I also discuss the energy of Jupiter and Gemini, the four eclipses of 2024, the next Mars retrograde in Leo, why Venus is a big deal in Gemini in June, and so much more. And this is a program where you bring your astrology chart and you follow along as I teach it. And then you can press pause, come back later, watch again. I've been doing this program since 2020, and a lot of you come back for this annual look at the year ahead to give you a heads up on how it's showing up in your chart, which is the value, which is what I want you to have. I want you to be that empowered individual who knows the themes of the year ahead. You can anticipate them. You got a heads up, and then you can be in your power when those energies arrive. So I'll be back every Wednesday and Monday for another podcast episode. Thank you so much for joining me for this topic. It's a big one. And we will keep on keeping on here as we move into more of these new cosmic energies. You can find all of my latest offerings over at mollymccord.online. And I hope to see you in one of my online programs as well. Take good care and I'll see you back here soon.